Hi, welcome to the bathtub, where when you hear this music, it's Dodo singing this. Watching all my troubles go swimming down to Dwayne. That's the Myrtle Tweety Bird. Um, or as we know him here at the, the bathtub, is a litigious little yellow bastard. He's a, he's a litigious bastard. And, and his friend, his, his buddy, his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, is a hack. And they're coming after us. We don't care. We don't. They can come after us for this song. We don't care. We, we, I got Dodo's going to protect me. Anyway, this is uh, the bathtub. We're in the new year, 2024. We've been doing this stupid show for years and years. And he, always love hearing from most of, almost all of our, almost all of the people who watch these videos. We love hearing from. But every once in a while, we hear from some idiot. And we just, we just, we just don't ignore. We just ignore him. Just ignore him. Anyway, today, uh, we're doing a, this is a little trouble. I found this a little troublesome to do this one. We're reading through Cormac McCarthy. We kind of fell off the boat doing Cormac McCarthy for a while ago, a while back. I don't, I, I can't remember what the last one is that we did. It may have been the stonemason. But anyway, um, I got back, I got back on the old horse of reading through Cormac McCarthy because we wanted to read through to his last two novels, which are The Passenger and Stella Maris, I think. We haven't gotten to those yet. And so I had these two. These were two screenplays he wrote. I guess that's why we got to the, we got a little delayed here as I was reading screenplays. One's called The Gardener's Son. I believe that was done for PBS. And again, you never never listen to the old master bather when it comes to, to data. Always check it yourself because I, I'm not really looking these things up very carefully. This is published, oh, hell, what, what does it say? Anyway, there's a big introduction to it by the producer or director of a TV film. And uh, 1975, in the 70s or so, so before McCarthy was really famous, there's a nice forward to it. Um, and then the other one is a more recent one, and much more McCarthy-esque in a kind of horrific way, The Counselor, which was made into a movie by Ridley Scott. I want to say in the, uh, what was it? It wasn't that long ago. Uh, ten to, it, it's always on uh, Netflix. Um, I'm never going to watch it, by the way. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about these two books. Okay, so one of them is The Gardener's Son. Um, here's our, don't forget, this is our cool T-shirt we got for Christmas, International Bathing Alliance. Don't trust any ma anybody who calls himself a master bather and he's not wearing this T-shirt, don't don't even let, don't let him in the house, okay? Especially an old guy. Some old guy calls himself a master bather. You don't want him, you don't want him in your house. Anyway, rattling on here, um, I, I sort of enjoyed, I sort of enjoyed, I can't say I enjoyed reading these books. I, I did like, The Gardener's Son was a little easier for me to handle. Um, it's, it remind, it's about these two, he, McCarthy's scripts are actually really well written. He writes the most beautiful stage directions you've ever seen and, and, and uh, scene settings and all that stuff. So it's very well written, like everything he writes. And it's a, it's a little more traditional kind of naturalistic novel from the 30s or 40s. It's about these two families. One's fairly well off. One's pretty dirt poor, I guess. And it's a, it starts off with one of the uh, these two young men from these two different families. And it's told mainly at the point of the poorer kid who loses one of his legs at the beginning of the, of the, of the movie. And then later uh, murders a member of the kind of wealthy family and goes to... And the last half of this book is sort of, it's almost a paradigmatic McCarthy uh, story. He's waiting on death row to be, to be killed by the state. And it's pretty horrific. And you're always kind of wanting the guy to get away. And of course, they never get away in McCarthy. They just go through it. And it's nothing, it's not a particularly unusually, uh, an unusual book. It's it's wet written and it's written well and it's worth reading for just the prose of McCarthy. So anyway, the book that kind of made me kind of made me hesitate doing this this latest one is the the counselor. This was again made into a movie with lots of big shots. It's always on I always see it on Netflix and I always know I don't want to watch it because <laughs> I can just tell it's going to be horrible and it's a pretty horrific, probably the most horrific of all the books I've read by McCarthy, including The Road. And it's it's very similar to No Country for Old Men. It seems to come out of the same period of McCarthy's thinking. And it's sort of, a, again, I can't say it's good versus evil, but it's human beings in a world that is pretty evil. And and the central character is a guy called the counselor. He's a lawyer. 
This is one of the best written screenplays I've ever read. It just just for prose, it's beautifully written. That he does descriptive passages, which you can just feel the clock of the the scene going along. There's one scene where these the bad guys are stringing wire across a a road so they can basically chop a guy's head off on a motorcycle. That just gives you an idea what this book is like. And it's just two or three pages, just beautiful prose. I mean, just the clock of this horrific thing that's about to happen is so well written. The counselor starts off with this kind of passionate love affair between this man and this woman. And uh, and it's kind of the best part. The best, most, the least depressing part of the book is the beginning. The guy's he's a counselor. Then he goes off to buy diamonds. There's a kind of beautiful passage talking to a diamond merchant and talking about what diamonds are valuable. And the course of the book is about a guy who really gets involved with the drug business can, and unleashes this kind of horrific, monstrous force, this criminal enterprise from, uh, from Mexico. Mexico in the McCarthy novels, the, the Border Trilogy and in these drug, drug crime novels, it's this kind of this horrific unconscious of life. It's just everything, this horrible stuff comes, in midi, comes up out of, out of this under current of American it's unconscious almost and it comes into America and, 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 and does these horrible things. The the uh, the counselor gets involved in the drug business, make a long story short, and then he does a favor for a woman he's representing in a in a prison and helps her son out. And it turns out the son is actually stealing money from the drug cartels. And as a result, this horrific, monstrous group of people come out of out of the unconscious almost, but told in very literal, physical narrative scenes, and they just destroy everybody in it. I don't want to say too much about more about it. There's two or three horrific ideas in this book. One has to do with snuff films. That kind of almost tells you all you need to know, and it's a very brief description of a snuff film, which I, I really found just really upsetting and disturbing. The other one is a kind of a, a torture device that's used to kill people, which may or may not be true. I don't know. But these two kind of ideas are set up early in the book, in the, in the movie, and you know they're going to come back. And the whole book is basically waiting for these horrific things to happen. Um, I can't really recommend it in a way. I mean, I really found it very disturbing. This is the most disturbing of all the McCarthy books I've read. It's probably one of the better written of his books. And I thought I'd read a couple of passages because they do both the books, both the movies represent kind of this... What do you? I don't know. This philosophy, this this vision of the world and life that comes up out of McCarthy, and never more darkly than in these books. Um, one of them is this line here. There's two or three lines in these books. One is one of the guys says, "If men were no more just or fair, just than God, there'd be no peace in this world." In other words, the world is so horrific with a God. Um, and he says, if men were no better than God, there would be no peace. Everywhere I look, I see men trying to set right the inequities that God's left them with. The two incredibly powerfully written sentences. And it's, it's not simply an atheistic version of the world. It's the idea that, that um, human beings may be awful, but they're better than the God who created the world they're in. Does that make sense? It, it's a pretty dark world. Finally, this, this, this counselor goes off and... He's trying to he's trying to save himself and his his girlfriend, and horrific things happen to everybody. He meets a guy who says this to him. He says, "I would urge you to see the truth of your situation, counselor. You're going to be killed. You're going to be slaughtered. That is my advice. It is not for me to say what you should have done in the past. Get involved with drugs. Get involved with wanting wealth. These diamonds come back as an image in the book too." It is not for me to say what you should have done or not done. I only know that the world in which you seek to undo your mistakes is not the world in which they were made. <laughs> Beautifully written sentences, even if it's a horrific vision. The world, the world in which you made these mistakes is different from the world you need to correct the mistakes. That world doesn't exist. You are at a cross in the road, and here you think to choose. But here there is no choosing. There is only accepting. The choosing was done long ago. Anyway, those, there, I won't read too much more of it. I, I did find it. It was kind of a brilliant and, uh, and disturbing uh, book. 
And it reminds, I keep reminding, McCarthy reminds me so much of Ligotti. This is one of my favorite, this is probably my favorite Ligotti book, but even more monstrous. It's a kind of monstrous vision of the world. We're working our way towards reading The Passenger, and I did get enough of a glimpse in reading around about The Passenger has visions of the the whole, really the, the horrible bombings in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, just like The Road is about this post-apocalyptic nightmare. And I don't know, I, I find McCarthy kind of a fascinating and beautiful, he's a beautiful prose writer, and, and but I find this, some of his books are very difficult to take. And I found, I found The Counselor to be the most difficult and possibly one of his better written books. So take that as you will. I can't recommend it. I, I, I read it in like almost once, two sittings. I couldn't put it down. Like I, I couldn't put down many McCarthy novels, but it was the one I kind of wish I hadn't read because it has a couple images in it that really upset me. Anyway, that's the honesty. I tried to be as honest as I could about these two books. Um, I think we'll go back to uh, McCarthy. I only have two or three books left to read, um, but I may take a little bit of a break because I found those pretty, pretty terrible. Okay, stay safe. Happy bathing. I'll try to do a few brighter, brighter, uh, brighter uh, bathtubs in the next couple of uh, episodes. We're going to do them, do them quickly together as normal. Stay safe. Dodo says. Dodo says goodbye. Do you want to say goodbye, Dodo? Okay. Take care.